Hallelujah. God, we love you. We come to pour our love on you like oil. Right now, be in the midst of us, God. Embrace us with your love. Simple song says this. Our hearts cry Be magnified In this your holy temple In this your holy place And we will rise To Zion's highs To praise and glorify Unified and oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. oh how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we This your this holy is place. Your holy yes, God. Place. And we will ascend to the hill and we will rise. Zion's heights to praise and glorify. Unify and all how we all how. serve? 
We are excited to announce the beginning of our deacon's ministry. Qualifications for a deacon. A deacon is self-controlled in speech, appetites, and actions. A deacon is sound in the faith. A deacon has been tested. A deacon is faithful to their spouse, manages their children and household well. You may nominate qualified men and women to serve as deacons. The nomination period is between November 14th to November 28th. To make your nominations, just go to transformingfaithchurch.com. That's transformingfaithchurch.com. And click on the link for nominations. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We bless you. We lift you and we give you glory this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Transforming Faith. We are so excited that you are here and worshiping uh, with us this morning on behalf of our pastor and first lady. We welcome you. Listen, we want you uh, to whatever platform you're on, we want you to share this uh, worship experience. We want you to share it. We want you to uh, tag people. We want all of those things that you do, whether it's on Facebook or uh, Instagram or whether it's on Twitter. Amen. And bring in other folks so they can experience our God the way we experience our God. Amen. Amen. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get ready uh, to go into prayer. Father, we thank you and bless you for your faithfulness. We thank you and we bless you for your goodness. Oh, your goodness is better than life to us. And you're such a good, good father. That's, that's not what you do. That's just who you are. That's just, you, you, you just good. You can't help it. You just good. It's just who you are. It's part of your makeup. Amen. Uh, your goodness and your love and your compassion. It's just who you are, God. You, and we are blessed and we thank Thank you that we serve a God that we can call Father. You don't just, uh, you're just not our God, but you are our Heavenly Father. And, 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 the, and the songwriter saying that our, our, our help, our help comes from uh, the Lord. Amen. Our help, our help. Everybody else may get help in other places, but we realize, we recognize, we've been around long enough, we've been through enough, we've seen enough to recognize our help. I help. Uh, uh, the old folks used to say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If you were to draw yourself from me, God, I, I don't, ain't got no other place to go. You, you are my help. You are my strength. You are my source. You are my everything. And so, God, we bless you. Thank you that you never leave us. Thank you you never forsake us. Thank you that you never walk out on us, God. Thank you that you're always there. Thank you, God, and we bless you today. We ask you this morning, oh God, that you would just uh, uh, minister to your people, God, as we worship you today. God, minister to the needs of your people. Some uh, need you for this. Some need you for that. Some uh, that are sick. Some need financial support. Some are emotionally worn out. Some, God, are struggling and don't know what to do. I ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would minister to the needs of your people. You declared in your word that we could cast all of our cares on you. Why? Because you care for us. So this morning, God, we back the truck up this morning and we say, Lord, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. We need you today, God. We need you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you that you are a generous God and you ask us to be a generous people. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you that you're resetting things in our church, you're resetting things in our lives, you're resetting things in our homes, even on our job. Thank you that you're the God who is generously resetting stuff. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Now, come on. Come on, God. Come on, God. Be glorified today. Come on, God. Be lifted up. Be magnified. We love you. We thank you. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, we welcome you. We are so excited and thankful that you are here with us, worshiping our God. Amen. Our God is a mighty God. Our God is a awesome God. Our God is a wonderful God and he can do anything and we believe that this morning. We believe that is what's going to happen. Listen, listen, listen. 
We want to be connected to you. You want you to be connected to Transforming Faith. So there's a way you can do that. You get your phone out, amen, and we want you to text the letters TFC to uh, to the number 797979. Again, the, the letters TFC to the number 7979. That way, we'll be connected to you and you'll be connected to us and we're going to do kingdom work together for the kingdom of God. Amen. Also, we believe in the power of prayer. We want you to go to our website, transformingfaithchurch.com. Uh, Amen. Transformingfaithchurch.com. There's a, a button there that says uh, prayer. You click on that button and listen. Listen, you can put your prayer request in there. And we will be praying for you. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing to know somebody somewhere. Sometimes the days I get through and I know the only way I made it through that day is somebody was praying for me. For me, I, We want to do that for you. Amen. And if you're on all of the other platforms, there's a button that should be popping up that says prayer. Click on that button. We want to pray for you. Amen. We want to lift you before our God. Hallelujah. Well, it's time to give. It's time to give. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, an excited, exuberant, happy giver. We give out of our excitement. We look in anticipation to be able to sow back into God, into his kingdom, and into the work he's doing. And just our, our gifts are a symbol of obedience. Our gifts are a symbol of faith. God, we trust you. We believe you. We know you'll do the impossible. We're giving you what we got. We're putting it back in your hand and trusting you will do the impossible in our lives. Listen, three ways to give this morning. Three ways to give. Uh, we want you first, you can give through text. Amen. Get your phone back out and uh, we want you to text this morning to give and simply text uh, the amount that you want to give. Put that in the, in the, in, in, in the, in the thing and then you want to text it to this number, 678-616-9400. The, the amount you want to give, and then you're going to text it to this number, 678-616-9400. If you've given that way before, of course, you know how it works. If you're not given that way, this is the first time, it's going to send you back a link that's going to walk you through the process of giving. Amen? And secondly, uh, you can go to our website. Again, that's Transforming Faith church.com and there's a button there that says contribute you want to click on that button and it'll walk you through the process of giving amen 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 we are excited about what god is doing so we want you to go there again www.transformingfaithchurch.com it should be showing right there on your screen uh, and if you're watching us on facebook or, in or instagram in in the comments there, there there should be something that says give you click there and it'll walk you through giving amen and finally you can uh, uh give through check amen amen right get your little checkbook out amen praise to be to god and you want to write that check to transforming faith church uh that uh transforming faith church and you're going to mail it to Transforming Faith Church, P.O. Box 1734, Lithonia, Georgia, 30058. Again, that's P.O. Box 1734, Lithonia, Georgia, 30058. Amen, amen. And so we are grateful for what you will do. Pray and ask God to show you how you, amen, can expand the kingdom, amen. And, and, and as we move into this season of generosity, Amen. Your gifts are going to be so important. Should be showing now on the screen what you what you gave on last week, and so we are thankful. Amen. We can keep doing what God called us to do. We can keep sharing the gospel. Keep telling folks about Jesus. Why? Because you are faithful and uh, you are obedient in your giving. It allows us to do just that and to love our kids and our wives and our spouses, our husband, wives, everybody through ministry. Amen. Because of your gifts. Amen. And so now uh, we get ready, uh, as you're getting ready, rather, to give, amen, and you're preparing your gifts this morning, amen. The worship team, get ready to come back and continue. We're going to worship God this morning as we give. We're going to lift up Jesus as we give this morning. Come on, worship team, and lead us as we worship our God in our giving. God bless you now. God bless you as you Such a special way 
That's why I will praise you. I'll lift you up and magnify your name. Yes, God. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for leading us in prayer and our giving moment. Thank you, Zeb Ellis and worship team band. Thank you for leading us 
in worship this morning. Thank you for pointing us to God. Hallelujah. Let us go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for a day we have never seen, God. We thank you for bringing us this far along the way, God. Thank you for showing up in our worship experience, God. Thank you for receiving our worship, our praise, our adoration for you, oh God. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would uh, be in all of our individual spaces and places, God. Show up, God, that, that we can hear your word. Show up that we can see what you're saying. Show up that our heart can embrace the words that you are putting in my mouth on this morning, God. Holy Spirit, resonate in our spaces, God. Through this service, God, virtually, God, be in our presence, God, so that we can see you high and lifted up so that we can uh, love you the way that we do so that you can love us back the way that you desire god we love you we honor you we bless your holy name god now be with me god as i deliver your word let no flesh god rise up god but let your holy spirit be in this space and speak through me we love you we honor you we Bless your name. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. Can we all say amen together? Amen, 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 amen. Y'all, so excited to be here with you this morning to, to worship God together, even virtually. Um, but to, to lean in a little bit more on this series that God has given us, The Heart of Generosity. The Heart of Generosity. This is part two of this series. And, uh, and, and I stated last week, if you've been rocking along with us for the past few years or even for the entire four years, you know that this is something that we do annually. We, we, we lean into this message series called The Heart of Generosity. We focus on what God has to say about generosity. We, we connect our faith with our works. We, we connect our words with our works and it's all in the heart of generosity. We, we revisit this series because we believe that um, generosity is literally the very heartbeat of God. Like when, when God looks at us, when he looks at the world, that, that, that one of the, the major areas that he wished we would all get is the heart of generosity. And we believe that if generosity is important to God, it ought to be important to us as well. Now, as a reminder, uh, we, we have been defining generosity as this, as the free and liberal bestowal or giving of wealth, resources, power, possessions, or kindness upon others. Yeah, there's three parts to this definition. Generosity is number one, free. Generosity number two is liberal. And generosity number three is tangible. It's free because you're not charging something. You're not, you're not giving somebody the hookup or a deep discount uh, when you're talking about generosity. You are not looking for anything in return. Generosity is free. It's liberal because it's not stingy. It's not holding back. It's not an Indian giver. It's not uh, waiting to see what uh, others may do or what their response may be. It's not looking to see if somebody deserves it or not. Generosity is liberal. And then generosity is tangible. It's, it's a tangible thing. It's not pie in the sky. It's, it's a practical thing. It's real. It's Meeting the tangible things, the tangible needs uh, of others uh, with, with tangible things like uh, wealth, like resources, like power, like possessions, and yes, even kindness. Generosity is free. It's liberal. It's tangible. And our base scripture has been uh, out of the book of Matthew, the first gospel, the first book in the New Testament in chapter number six. Much of our series will be coming uh, out of that book and that chapter, Matthew chapter six. Uh, 
And uh, we believe it's, it was important to Jesus in that because in Matthew chapter six, we realized that this was very early in the ministry, in the public ministry of Jesus. Just a couple of chapters before Jesus launched his public ministry in Matthew chapter four and, and he began teaching uh, his disciples in Matthew chapter five. And then, yes, we get to Matthew chapter six and he's continuing to to teach his disciples and anyone who was around that was seeking his blessing, his healing uh, and his words. And in Matthew chapter six, verse one, this is what Jesus says. He leans immediately into generosity. He says this in the new King James version. He says, take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward from your father in heaven. Jesus is talking about generosity. Although it, he is not using the terminology of generosity, he's calling it charitable deeds. And in other uh, verses of scripture throughout the New Testament, it's, it's referred to as giving or, or charitable deeds, as I've mentioned, or even generosity in other areas. Uh, all of these words are synonymous. They all have the same meaning and, 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 and I'll be using them interchangeably. Jesus used them interchangeably as well, but it, but, but it's simply, uh, giving of yourself to others. And so you quickly realize that even though Jesus is not using the exact word uh, in this passage of scripture, he's using charitable deeds. He's talking about generosity. And we learned last week that in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter six, this very first verse that uh, Jesus is connecting generosity to other spiritual disciplines. To, to spiritual disciplines like praying in, in Matthew chapter six, verse five, uh, Jesus tells his disciples, and when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, but when you pray, verse six, go into your room and when you shut your door, he says, uh, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. He's talking about prayer. He's and he's teaching his disciples later on down uh, in, in, in that passage of scripture. Jesus actually teaches his disciples how to pray. We know it as the Lord's prayer. Then after he finishes with the Lord's prayer and teaching his disciples how to pray, he leaps right over uh, immediately following in verse 16, talking about fasting. Two spiritual disciplines, prayer and fasting. Verse 16, he says, moreover, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites. He has that same phrase with a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to be uh, appear to men to be fasting. Verse 17. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Verse 18, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Jesus is talking about praying and fasting. And we know typically you don't even have to be a, a serious Christian to know that both praying and fasting are deep spiritual disciplines that are intended to grow you closer to God, to align you with God's will and God's plan for your life. We know that spiritual disciplines are intended to grow you closer. So when Jesus puts generosity within the same context uh, as praying and fasting, we now know that Jesus also looks at generosity as a spiritual discipline. We know that Jesus is looking at generosity as a way to grow closer to God, as a way to align yourself with God. But in this, this same lesson, we also find something very interesting in Matthew chapter six, verse one. I read to you the new King James version where he said, take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men. But we, we looked at some other versions uh, uh, of the Bible in this for the same passage. And we see in the Lexham English Bible, I talked about this last week, but in case you weren't here, I want you to hear it. But even if you were here, I want you to, to remember this because this is 
critically important about this whole message, this whole concept of generosity. In Matthew chapter six, verse one, the Lexham English Bible says this, and take care not to practice your righteousness before people to be seen by them. Uh, here it is in the English Standard Version. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. Here's the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of people to be seen by them. Here it is in the American Standard Version. Take heed that ye do not your righteousness before men to be seen by them. See, all of these various versions, you all, they, they carry the characteristics of this spiritual discipline or this spiritual act of being proactive, being intentional, uh, being an intentional effort of us uh, aligning ourselves and growing with God. Why does this, why do I say that? Because uh, they translate charitable deeds into uh, practicing righteousness, getting in alignment with God's righteousness. I, if I'm practicing righteousness, I'm trying to make sure that I'm in alignment with God, who is the example, who is the originator of what is right. Righteousness is, is, is being in right standing with God. And so if I'm practicing righteousness, I'm practicing all of those things that God says puts you or places you in alignment with God. And so just like praying and just like fasting, generosity comes out of a right relationship with God. It comes out of a heart for God. See, what Jesus is saying here is that uh, what we do practically on earth ought to be a reflection of what we see in and through God. That's good. I got to say it again. Jesus is saying here that what we do practically on earth ought to be a reflection of what we see in and through God. Jesus uh, 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 told the disciples that when he was teaching them how to pray, he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done uh, on earth as it is in heaven. What we do practically on earth ought to be a reflection of what we see in and through God. Your generosity then is, it should be generated by your relationship with God. Your generosity, although it may be done in a way that people will see it, you really, as Jesus is saying, don't do all this stuff uh, to be seen by men. It should be done in secret because your generosity, your charitable deeds, your giving, giving is really for an audience of one. Yeah, it's, it's not even for the person that you're blessing. It's for an audience of one God, our creator, the creator of the universe, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's why Jesus is able to boil down our faith into two things. He says, out of all the commandments that God gave through Moses, the over 600 plus commandments that God gave to Moses, Jesus says, look, I see y'all having a tough time with all these commandments. So let me just boil it down to these two. Let me just boil it down to this. Love God and love your neighbor. Now I taught that on this, this past Wednesday for Bible study, a shameless plug. If, if you don't join us for Bible study, you're missing out actually some real practical time in God's word and getting some understanding of what God is saying, who God is and his character. But I talked about that on this past Wednesday uh, evening at 8 p.m. Uh, when when I went to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 25 through 37. I'm not going to read that this morning for you all, uh, but it is uh, the story of the Good Samaritan or the parable of the Good Samaritan. And what we find in this parable that Jesus is giving to this young lawyer and for all who are able to hear, uh, he is he is responding to a lawyer's question. Jesus had been teaching. He had been healing. He had been doing what Jesus does, right? Giving him his good stuff, right? And this lawyer uh, uh, pops up to him and basically says, look, Jesus, what must I do 
to inherit eternal life. Those were his exact words. And, and Jesus basically turned to him and said, look, what does, what does the law say? And, and the lawyer responded back to him. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and do that also to your neighbor. See, the lawyer was a student of the law, the student of God's law. He knew what the law stated in terms of what was given to Moses. He quoted right out of Deuteronomy chapter six, verse five. He, that was that was a law. That was a commandment that was given to, to Moses. And so this lawyer knew the law. And Jesus knew that the lawyer knew the law. And Jesus basically was like, show you right. You know the law. Uh, and, and, and because you know the law, you will live. You will, you will live. You will, you will do that. And then the lawyer being a smart lawyer, no offense to lawyers, but you know, uh, you, you can tell a lawyer, but you can't tell them much, right? And, uh, and so the lawyer, uh, responds back after Jesus said, show you right. You'll now live. Uh, the lawyer says, well, uh, well, who is my neighbor then? And, and, and Jesus, uh, responds to this lawyer by giving him this parable of the good Samaritan. Now, a parable, I've stated this before, a parable is simply a, a simple story that is intended to give a spiritual lesson. It's a simple story that's intended to give a spiritual lesson. So clearly what Jesus responds to the lawyer, uh, his response to the lawyer was not sufficient enough. Maybe it was not intellectual enough for the lawyer. So he said, well, let me dumb it down for you. Let me simplify it for you. Let me give you this simple story that you can get this spiritual lesson. And Jesus tells the story of this Jewish man who had been jacked. He had been beaten. He had been uh, laid out. He had been robbed and he was on the side of the road. And, and, and you had these two religious leaders, the priest and the, uh, and the Levite who saw the Jewish man, which was literally his brother. They were of the same group of the same race. They saw their brother across the street and decided to go a different way. But yet the Samaritan who was uh, from a different group, a different race of people, as a matter of fact, the Samaritans were um, uh, were not down with the Jewish people. The Samaritans didn't fool with the Jewish people. They didn't hang out. They they worshiped God, but they worshiped God differently. They worshiped God in a different place with a different style. And so they 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 were um, uh, kind of had animosity towards one another. But yet it was this dude who was different from the Jewish man, who, who, who didn't share a people with this man. It's this dude that stopped and, and, and he tended to the needs of this Jewish man. Jesus was giving this lesson to the lawyer to, to really uh, 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 break down what generosity really looks like. This parable is a is is a story of charitable deeds it's a story of generosity and through this parable we learn a, a lesson that generosity has three characteristics now although i didn't read uh luke chapter 10 i'm going to tell you to write down uh luke chapter 10 starting at verse 25 and i want you to go back and read it for yourself and and read it through the lens of this message this morning but we 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 see, we see through of uh, this parable that generosity has three characteristics generosity through uh, this spiritual lesson of this parable looks like being one intentional it looks like being too practical and it looks like being three sacrificial. It looks like being intentional, being practical, being sacrificial. Now I talked about this this past Wednesday, so I'm not going to lean into it as much as I did then, but, 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 but the Samaritan was the, the Samaritan intentionally came across the street to this Jewish man in need. This this man was across the street, which means the man was out of his way and he intentionally stopped by to see what was going on with this man. Whereas the two religious leaders who shared the same race and grouping of people, they intentionally walked away, crossed over the street. The Samaritan intentionally came across the street to meet the needs of this man. Number two, the Samaritan practically assisted the man 
in need. He practically assisted him. He he bandaged up his wounds. He he put him on his mode of transportation. The Bible says it was an animal. It might have been a donkey or something like that. And he and, and he practically took this man to the hotel to receive shelter and comfort while he was amending from his wounds. And then number three, the, the Samaritan was sacrificially, the Samaritan sacrificially took of his own resources to assist the man in need. He paid for his hotel. He, he paid for his food. Then it says he had to go about his business. He had to leave. He couldn't stay at the hotel, but he wanted, he told the Jewish man, you stay here. And then he told the hotel manager, he told the hotel manager, he said, look, I got to bounce. I got to go, but I want you to still tend to this man and, and, and whatever it costs to tend to him. When I return, uh, I'll repay whatever is owed on his behalf. Y'all, that was a sacrificial moment Jesus is given to the lawyer some practical characteristics of what generosity looks like. It's intentional, it's practical, and it is sacrificial. Jesus shows us through this lesson that generosity is not a word game, y'all. It, it is, it is, it is an action game. Generosity takes the faith uh, deep in our heart and and it pulls it out and these words in our mouth are transformed into actions the actions of our hands and the deeds the charitable deeds that 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 God is uh, wanting us to to put forward generosity is more than just about words it's more than just what we proclaim to be our faith but it's something that is actionable. It's something that is that is intentional. It's practical. It is sacrificial. And what we see is that generosity in its definition, back to its definition, generosity is free. The Samaritan didn't ask for anything in return. Generosity is liberal. The Samaritan didn't tell the hotel manager, look, cut him off at $100. Once you get to $100, don't do nothing else for him because that's all I'm going to pay. No, generosity is liberal and generosity is tangible. The Samaritan came to this man in need and he tried his best to meet his tangible needs for shelter, for coverage, for, for covering, for uh, bandages, for his wounds, for food and shelter and all that good stuff. The Samaritan actually lived out in a very practical way oh, the definition of generosity being free, liberal, and tangible. So now let's turn to our own lives. See, we've been reading in here uh, what generosity looks like. We've been hearing from Jesus um, talk about uh, generosity and what to do or what not to do and the right perspective to have about generosity. You remember, Jesus' initial response to the lawyer was, what does the law say? What does the faith, your faith say? See, and, and, and that is kind of for, for us, uh, the conceptual thing. For the lawyer, he said, what does the law say? He knew that the lawyer knew the law, but that still remained a, a conceptual thing. It was a theoretical thing, but Jesus wanted to know, bro, can you live this thing out? Can you walk this thing out? Jesus responded to him, look, um, uh, I understand what your faith says, but can you live out your faith the way that this Samaritan did? Can you be generous in the way that, that this Samaritan did, doing it freely, doing it uh, liberally, doing it in a very tangible kind of way? Jesus responded uh, by showing how this story of the Samaritan gives this practical guide on generosity. Generosity looks like uh, loving God in a practical way, but it also looks like lo loving your neighbor in a practical way. See, if you are generous without uh, uh, to people without being generous to God, you are a person driven by good, but not necessarily a person driven by God. 
Did you hear that? Did, if, if you are a generous person who, who, um, who is, is focused on being generous to God's people, but not generous to God, you are driven by your generosity to people, not by your generosity to God. You know, that really puts you in the same boat. I talked about this last Sunday. It puts you in the same boat as the United Way or or Goodwill or any of these nonprofits that are doing good things, but they are not being driven or directed by God. They understand that which is good. Helping our brothers and sisters, those are that's a good thing. Nothing to knock about that. But we as 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 believers, we as followers of Christ understand that there is a higher good. It's it's, it's we love people uh, 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 practically uh, in, a, in a very actionable way because we love God. We, we love people and we love God and our actions ought to reflect the same. But, but what I don't want us to miss out in this message of generosity, I don't want us to get so focused on what we're doing for humanity, for our brothers and sisters, for our neighbors that we forget that God wants us to be generous to him as well. And when I'm talking about being generous to God, I am talking about uh, uh, giving. You're giving to God. Now, I know I've, I've, in some of your minds, I've taken a hard left already. I thought we were talking about being good to our brothers and sisters, being good to communities, being good to children, being good to our neighbors. Yes, but God also wants us to be generous to him. See, uh, generosity is a spiritual discipline. You remember me saying that, right? Just like fasting and praying. And, and I started off by saying, and I didn't mean to give you the okie doke and kind of give you a head fake or something like that. But, but, but God wants us to be generous to him as well. We started off by talking about being generous to God's people. But today I want to make sure that we know that we have to be generous to God. God is the creator of all things, the author and the finisher of our faith, the creator of the universe, the, the one who gave us our bodies, the one who give, has given us our minds, our ability to gain wealth, the one who is the reason that we have all that we have. And, and God just simply wants to know, do we, do we acknowledge that in a very tangible and practical way? By our giving back to him. See, the spiritual discipline of, 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 of generosity is as we give to him, we are growing closer to him. As we're giving back just a fraction of what he has given us, it lets God know that we get it. We, we know that what we have, none of it is our own uh, technically, but all he asks is for a portion of it back through our tithes and our offering. To giving to God. Being generous to God, being charitable to God. Remember, I'm using those words interchangeably. It, it looks like giving to God financially. Yep, I'm telling you, I know I lost a bunch of you and you like it. Before you click off, just hear me out. Just hear the remainder of this. We don't have that much, that, that much longer to go. Matthew chapter six. We're still in our, in our base scripture. Matthew chapter six, verse 21. Jesus gives a greater a clarity in Matthew chapter six. Well, let's start at verse 19, actually. As this uh, spiritual discipline of generosity is played out, this is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter six. Remember, Jesus talks about charitable deeds in Matthew chapter six and the first, what, four verses. And then he gets to praying in, in Matthew chapter six, verse five. And I think he goes down to chapter uh, verse 15 and talking about praying rather. And he teaches his disciples how to pray. And then we pick up in verse 16, Matthew chapter six, verse 16. And Jesus is talking about faith. Now we get down to Matthew chapter six, verse 19. And this is what Jesus says right after he finished talking about the trio of spiritual discipline, generosity, praying and fasting. Right after he finishes with fasting, he says this in verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven 
whether neither moth nor rust destroys, whether where thieves do not break in and steal. For verse nine, uh, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's almost like Jesus said, now let me revisit this generosity thing. I know I was talking about generosity up in the first four, four verses of chapter six, but, and I know I went to prayer and fasting, but let me revisit this generosity thing. Um, let me revisit it for you so you can truly, truly understand. It's almost like Jesus was closing any uh, uh, loopholes in anyone's minds about, uh, about letting the hearer know that he is also talking about financially being generous to him. See, in, 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 in verse 19, he says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Basically, he's saying, don't hoard your stuff. Don't, don't just hold on to your stuff. He's like, no, don't do that. He said, but uh, he says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys. But then he says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your treasure is your financial giving to uh, your brothers and sisters, but it's also your giving to God as well. Later on in Matthew uh, chapter 23, Jesus says this and gives us a little bit more clarity of, of where Jesus stands on giving to God. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, Matthew 23 and 23 says this, woe to you. Now, Jesus is talking to the scribes and the Pharisees who are religious leaders. He's again talking to religious leaders. Uh, in, uh, uh, at this moment, he says in verse 23, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. See, as Jesus is talking to the religious leaders, he said, look, You've been abiding almost like he's talking to the young lawyer. He says, you've been abiding by the law. You know what the law says, and you've been abiding by the law. The law says that you ought to give a tithe. A tithe is 10% of what you have earned back to God. Now, the tithe during this season of, or this, uh, uh, of this era uh, in the Bible was more agricultural. It was how you did business, how you bartered, how you, how you earned your income. And so he's saying, you pay your tithe of mint, anise, and cumin. I have no idea what that is, but it's something that clearly they were able to give back to God. They were able to tithe that back. He says, you pay your tithe, but yet you neglect some of the weightier matters of the law. So they were given back to God. So they were given financially to God, but God is saying, but Jesus is saying right here, but now you're neglecting how you are treating your brothers and sisters through matters of justice and mercy and faith. Jesus is saying, look, you can give to me right through your tithe, uh, but also you need to give to your brothers and your sisters through issues like justice and mercy. You need to give generously. You need to give through your charitable deeds. When you see somebody with a need, you step up like the Samaritan did and you work to meet that need. Jesus says it's a both and. It's not an either or. You give to God and you give to your brothers and sisters. You give generously to God and you act generously towards your brothers and sisters. This is something that we have to do together. See, Jesus, being a Jewish man, he followed the law. He followed the law of Moses. He, he understood it. He practiced it as well. He knew that the law stated in, in Deuteronomy 12 that um, uh, it, it showed uh, where to worship, how to worship, but it also showed how to give back to God through your tithe. Jesus knew that Jesus practiced that, but Jesus is saying you got to give to God, but you also got to give to your brothers and sisters at the same time. It is the, it is mutually connected. 
It's in the DNA of one another to give to God and to give to your brothers and sisters as well. So when Jesus is talking about issues of justice and mercy, uh, he is directly connecting generosity uh, 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 to your brothers and sisters. But at the same time, he's connecting the generosity through the, the tithe to God as well. My brothers and sisters, generosity is how you love God and how you love your brothers and sisters. And how we show our love to God are, are through many of the spiritual disciplines that I talked to you about before, as Jesus is talking in Matthew chapter six, that he's saying that uh, your spiritual discipline of generosity, your spiritual discipline of, of, of praying, your spiritual discipline of fasting are all ways that you grow closer to me. But I don't want you to neglect the, the, that principle of generosity, of giving to God. He wants you to be able to give to him and give to your brothers and sisters. He wants you to be generous to him and generous to your brothers and sisters. And he wants you to be generous to, uh, he wants you to be a uh, charitable to him and charitable to your brothers and sisters as well. God is trying to show us that if you want to grow closer to me, look at your giving. Look at your generosity to me. Look at your generosity to your brothers and sisters. See, we show our generosity through, through our money. And I got three M's here. Through our minutes, that's our time. And through our mind, that's our focus. And I'm going to talk about, uh, in, in part three and four, I'm going to talk about how we are being generous with our minutes and then how we are being generous with our mind. But I'm finishing up today with our generosity with our money. And I don't want you all to miss out. I don't want you all to miss out on what God is calling in terms of our generosity, our generosity being intentional. Our being, our generosity being practical, our generosity being sacrificial. And I know we don't spend much time on, on giving, uh, in, in the church, even our giving moment during service, we kind of get in and get out. Most of our talk on giving is just thanking you for your generosity in your giving, in your heart of giving this morning. I want you to be, uh, intentional. I want you to be practical. And I want you to be sacrificial. Three things I want you to do today. Three things I want you to be intentional. Today, I want you to consider becoming a tither if you're not a tither. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I want you to become a tither. I want you to be intentional. It's in the word of the Lord. It's in the Bible. It's not something that's being made up. A tither is simply someone who gives 10% of their earned income back to God. And how do they give their income back to God? You give it through what you give to your local church, to your home church. And so if you're watching this and, and we're not your church home, then you give to the church that is your church home. Now, if you haven't joined a church and we are all you got, then you can write it to Transforming Faith Church. But I want you to be intentional uh, about becoming a tither, y'all, this morning. I want you to give it serious consideration right now. If you know that you are not giving 10% of, of what you have earned, I want you to consider that. You may have done it before, but you stopped for some reason. I want you to consider that and, 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 and become a tither. I want you to tithe and, and here's the thing about tithing. So in church, you hear about tithing and offerings. Well, technically, you only give an offering after you've already given your 10%. And so if it, if you have not given your 10% in terms of your earned income, then it's really a gift to God. It's not a bad thing, but it's a gift to God. I want you to consider to become a tither on this morning. And how do you think about that? I see you just simply look at your check and, 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 and you look at the, whether you want to look at your gross or your, uh, or your net, uh, just take 10% of that. And then that's what you would give every time that you get paid. That is what a tither looks like. I want you to consider becoming a tither. So that's the intentional part. Number two, I want you to consider being practical today. I want you to consider being practical today. Decide today 
that you will put your giving on autopilot. That means you set up, you set up your giving and you don't have to look at it again. You, you put your giving on autopilot. Thank God that he's allowed for us to expand our technology. You know, you can give each week or each month uh, without having to do anything. You just set up your recurring giving. You set up your recurring giving. Now, this is practical, and I know it may not seem too spiritual right now, but trust me, this is this is so spiritual. This is what you're doing. You're practically doing something that will grow you closer to God. You're, you're setting it up. You're being intentional, and now you're practically doing that. I want you to uh, decide to 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 uh, to give through recurring giving. Now, here's a practical, simple way for you to do it. You give every Sunday te by text to give. If you've ever given uh, by text to give, I want you to uh, write this number down. It's popping up on your screen. 678-616-9400. That's the number that you typically text to give. Now, normally when you give, you're putting the amount of money that you want to give uh, for your tithe or your offering or for your gifts, right? But instead of putting the amount you want to give, I want you to type the word give in there, right? G-I-V-E. So you pull out your phone, you type to the text to give number, which is 678-616-9400, and you type the word give and hit send. Now, what you're going to get is you're going to receive a text message back with a link in there. You click that link and then you hit the recurring tab uh, on that page and then you can give through that recurring tab. It'll set it up for you. Just follow the instructions. If you have issues with that, you can always email us at info at Transforming Faith Church. We'll walk you through that. But I want you to be practical today by deciding that you are going to give uh, on a, in a recurring fashion. You're going to set up your recurring giving. And you can do that again, 678-616-9400 and type the word give. What does that do for you? In a very practical way, it already determines first that you're giving to God. And it also forced you to do this. Some of us have not created or set or abided by a budget in a very long time, if ever. By giving to God first, you got to set your budget. You got to determine how you're going to spend your money because now, especially if you're tithing, you got to live on the 90% and you can do it. I know you can do it. So number one, I want you to be intentional. Number two, I want you to be practical today. And number three, I want you to be sacrificial today. Now, what does that mean? You're probably like, well, you already asked me to be a tither. That's sacrificial enough. Yes, it is. But this is what I'm talking about. As a part of our generosity series, we always concluded with a generosity campaign, something that we put uh, our words into action. We bless so many through our bike and toy giveaway, through our, our Thanksgiving meal giveaway, um, through our, our mortgage, rent and utility assistance program, through, uh, uh, through our um, uh, negative school lunch balance campaign. We have blessed literally hundreds and literally thousands of people through our generosity campaign. This morning, I want you to decide that you will be sacrificial today by joining us, by saying yes to our generosity campaign. Now, here's the deal. I'm not even rolling that out for you this morning. You're just going to have to trust me. We're going to roll out next Sunday uh, the generosity campaign. And my prayer is that at that moment, you will uh, seal your yes by a tangible expression of your yes. We're not asking you to give next Sunday or anything like that. We're just going to be rolling out what the generosity campaign looks like. Three, three, three intentional practical, sacrificial things that you can do this morning. Transformers and friends, I want you to know that uh, although I've ended this message with three points that don't seem very spiritual, I want you to trust me. By you taking these actions, this will be a spiritual moment that you will be growing closer to God, that you will begin aligning yourself up 
with God. Yes, it may be a little uncomfortable. If I could be honest, this is an uncomfortable message for me because I don't do this much uh, and if at all talking about money and giving. But I'm doing that not for us at the church, not for me personally. I'm doing it so that you can grow closer to God, that you can be in alignment with God. I know it's different, but I want you to ask this question. What's my relationship like with God? How close am I to God right now? Am I as close as I feel like I ought to be? Am I hearing from God in the way that 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 I believe that I can? And you you may have uh, taken on some of the other spiritual disciplines like you may have, you may be fasting and praying and and in your word. But you're still feeling that there is uh, somewhat of a disconnection between you and God. I would submit to you, why don't you try giving? Just try, try God, just try giving, try being intentional, try being practical, try being sacrificial to God, try being generous in a way that you haven't been generous before. Be intentional, be generous, be generous to God and be generous to your brother and your sister. So if you would, just stop for a moment, kind of get quiet and and ask God for yourself. How do I feel about my giving? Yeah, just let that resonate right now. Ask, Ask yourself, how do I feel about my giving? Hmm. And as you're sitting on that right now, I want you to 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 think about what you can do to fix that. Like if you don't feel like God is pleased with your giving, if you feel like you're not in alignment with God's word, if you feel like you're not being obedient to his word about being a tither and and giving in our offerings, um, you know, let's make a decision today. Let's make a decision that we will be intentional. We will be practical. Now forget we, I will, I will be sacrificial. Can I pray for you this morning? God, I thank you for your word. Thank you that you've given us paths to grow closer to you, God. Thank you for revealing in your word the the. Uh, the capacity, the ability that we have to grow closer to you, God, through so many spiritual disciplines. Thank you that we have a a, a way to pray to you, a way to grow closer to you through fasting, God, and a way to grow closer to you through our giving. God, my prayer is that you would soften hearts this morning who may be a little bit of heart and because of this word, because of the conversation, the preaching on giving. God, I pray that you would open up our spirits to see what you have for us and your thoughts and plans for us, God. I pray that we can make some decisions this morning, God, that make you smile, that make you say, come here, son, come here, daughter. Come closer to me. I'm pleased with your decisions. I'm pleased with your action. God, I pray that you would give uh, all those who are hearing me, whether live in person or in on a, on, on a recording, God, I pray that, that their hearts uh, would be moved to give intentionally, practically, and sacrificially. God, have your way in our lives. And our prayer is that my prayer is that we will see your rewards, God, in a very uh, a tangible uh, way, God, that we would see the, 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 the fruit of our giving and that we will turn back around and give you thanks for the wonderful things you've done for us. God, we love you. We honor you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. Can you say amen with me this morning? Amen, amen, amen. Y'all, well, look, if you've never confessed Jesus, that, that, that Jesus came to this earth, that he lived, that he died, that he was buried, but yet he was resurrected so that we can have eternal life, like the young lawyer said, eternal life with God. If you've never made that confession and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, this morning you can make that confession. 
And I want you to do this. I want you to type these letters, TFC, and text it to this number, 797979. It's popping up on your screen right now. And you can uh, make a decision for Christ. And we'll walk with you. We'll connect with you. We'll walk with you. And we'll grow with you. We'll pray with you as well. If you don't have a church home, you can do the same thing. Type TFC and send it to uh, 797979. We'll be in touch with you. And we'll love to embrace you and call you a transformer. That's what we call our members. Look, y'all, if you miss giving this morning, I know I've been talking a lot about it. If you miss giving and, and, and you want to, to go about giving again, again, there are three ways that you can give popping up on your screen are those ways that you can give. We thank you, of course, for all that you've given in the past, for your heart of generosity and for what you'll give in the future as well. Amen. Well, look, Pastor Lisa, Lit Students, you got next, y'all. I'm so excited about what they are presenting, y'all. They had a blast last weekend uh, as they uh, went to Camp Grace down in Roberta, Georgia. Prayerfully, your children came back and they were not the same. Amen. Well, look, I will see you all on next Wednesday at 8 p.m. and on next Sunday at the same space, the same time time 10 a.m. for part three of our heart for generosity prayerfully won't be so heavy for you amen go grab your kiddos and bring them up for pastor lisa and the lit students amen go in peace god bless you and i love you to life amen